Every year I go to Las Vegas for business. I have always wanted to fly there. Last year I had no voice and without voice no flight. This year, however, all pieces fell into order and I was off for a flight to the Grand Canyon. Anderson Ground, Hawker 825, Charlie Papa. Hawker 5, Charlie Papa Ground. Uh, yes sir, as you can see we're still here on the ground, just want to make sure our clearance does not time out. Via the internet site, airnav.com, I have found the highly recommendable Mojave Aviation FBO, based in Henderson Executive Airport, south of Las Vegas. After arranging insurance and doing some paperwork, I was set to fly the Piper Adam. I had bought all relevant maps, both VFR and IFR. That morning, I was being checked out by their CFI. During that checkout flight, it turned out that there was a problem with the backup electric fuel pump. So I was reassigned to fly the Piper Cherokee. Now I was ready to fly solo IFR to Grand Canyon National and Park Airport in Cherokee 55167. Airport. On departure turn right heading 180. Radar vectors Meads then is filed. Climb and maintain 6100. Expect 90 minutes after departure. Las Vegas departure frequency 1190.4. I was cleared for takeoff on runway 35 left. Right turn heading 180. I switched to Las Vegas departure on 119.4 and they re cleared me direct to Beach Springs VOR as they had landing traffic around Meads intersection. They called for traffic to my right, a Boeing 737 from South Island. I was flying from Las Vegas directly to the Peach Spring VOR, established at 9,000 feet. And then I joined the Victor 210 Airway to the Grand Canyon National Park and its associated VOR. I was able to uh, remain at 9,000 feet uh, while the MEA of Victor 210 was 10,000 feet. To the north of my flight path, the Grand Canyon was showing itself already. After a one and a half hour flight full of light turbulence, I was getting the Grand Canyon National Park Airport inside. Los Angeles Center asked me if I prefer an instrument approach or if a visual approach would do. I chose the latter and I was transferred to the tower to join a left hand base down. Here's the fuel map. Lots of touristy airplanes for people 
making a tour. Plenty of helicopter traffic. Another bunch of tourists going to visit the Grand Canyon in a Grand Caravan. They're using like big twin engine airplanes. Alright, <laughs> we're set to go again to um, make the scenic tour over the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon uh, is sitting uh, north of us here from the Grand Canyon Airport. It's going to be a VFR flight. We're crossing the, uh, the canyon itself a couple of times. I'm following the VFR route, so I'm going to go up to 11,500. Coming down to uh, 10,500 uh, and then proceeding uh, in the direction back of Henry. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy. By doing a couple of 360s I had reached 11,500 feet. I set course for the entry point of the Dragon Corridor, which I had already programmed in the GPS. The Dragon Corridor is one of the few where general aviation is allowed to fly over the canyon. Immediately I saw the cliff and my first thought was, Thelma and Louise. I heard on the radio a dozen of tour operators working below me. At my altitude, however, I was alone over this spectacularly large piece of beauty. 45 minutes of intense impressions were stopped at the west rim of the canyon. There you find the airports named Grand Canyon West, Pierce Ferry and Temple Bar, where I only landed in Microsoft Flight Simulator years ago. I returned via Lake Mead and the Hoover Dam to Henderson Airport. There I ended the most beautiful flight of my life. I tried to do handstands for you, I tried to do headstands for you, every time I 